Hey everyone, I uh, just wanted to do a quick video on uh, power functions and some of the graphs of power functions. Uh, so you may have seen already uh, some basic ones, but we're going to go through a little bit of uh, some weird examples on this one. Uh, so I'm just going to type in first, right, uh, y is x to the n, and I'm going to put a coefficient k in front of it. Um, Desmos will ask you if it doesn't recognize uh, the, the letters there, the K and the N, if you want to add a slider. Uh, I'm going to say yes, we'll, we'll add both. Uh, and this will basically give you values that you can adjust for uh, for those two, two values that I have right now, the K and the N. Uh, so right now K is 1, N is 1. Uh, so if you replace those, you can see this is just Y is 1 times X to the 1. Uh, so basically just y equals x is what this uh, looks like now. And uh, you can see that's a line that's just going up through there. Uh, as we adjust things, right, I can adjust uh, the k or I can adjust the n. So uh, you can also highlight and type, right? So if I wanted this n to be a 2 or a 3, I could do that. And uh, this is often what they'll talk about uh, with power functions uh, for these guys are some of these whole number exponents. Uh, but there are some interesting things that happen when uh, the exponent is not a whole number. So we'll kind of investigate that a little bit today. Uh, when you have whole number exponents, right, you can kind of predict the end behavior. This is often uh, one of the first things you'll talk about is uh, it going like up or down to the left, up or down to the right, uh, just that end behavior and, and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, the K will kind of adjust the uh, st it'll stretch it so it'll like stretch it up if you have a, a large value of K uh, or it'll shrink it down uh, as K gets close to zero uh, make it a little bit shorter a little bit wider uh, kind of looks like to the eyeball and then as K gets negative uh, that will flip it upside down so when that number in front of the x to the power becomes negative then it'll flip upside down and same thing closer to zero will be um, wider and further from zero will start to get steeper and uh, more stretched out vertically what we'll do now is kind of adjust i'm going to put this k value back at one um, just so that's not um, going to interfere with our adjusting the n and we'll go ahead and adjust the n and i'm just gonna drag it back and forth for a little bit here and then we'll talk about some of the stuff that happens so uh, as i right drag this back and forth you can see a lot of different shapes some weird shapes maybe uh, you'll see that left side appear and disappear uh, depending on what value it's at uh, so uh, but notice quadrant one which is up here uh, that's pretty much always present uh, where X is positive Y is positive uh, that's almost always there um, but some of the other pieces are not right so we want to see why are those pieces disappearing why are they reappearing that sort of thing um, so first off I'm going to go down to X is let's say 0.5 all right so uh, n is 0.5, uh, so this is x to the 1 half power. Uh, you may recognize that as a square root function, right? So uh, half powers you can also write as roots. Uh, so if I put that in, right, y is square root of x, then uh, that's just going to be the same exact function that's right there. So um, I guess I don't need those parentheses inside, but uh, y square root of x, same as x to the 1 half power, right? And uh, this is the main reason you're not going to see this left side of the graph, is that uh, square roots of negatives, right, lead to complex numbers. And complex numbers just generally do not show up in graphs uh, unless you have a specific type of graph that allows for it. So uh, just general graphs, right, this is a real axis in the x direction, real axis in the y direction. Uh, so these are all real numbers telling me what happens uh, with x and y, and those relationships. Uh, but there's not going to be any complex numbers that show up on this graph. Uh, as you know, this changes, right? So if I want to do uh, maybe this n is 0.2, right? This is the same as 
a one-fifth power, right? So I could change this as uh, x to the one-fifth instead of um, square root or a fifth root. If I wanted to write it as a fifth root, I could do that. Uh, and basically a fifth root, I am allowed to take fifth roots of negatives, right? So uh, odd roots of negatives are allowed. They just give you negatives back. Uh, so this part of the graph is going to show up. So as I slide that power back and forth, that's why some of the values will have this negative area showing. Some of them won't. Um, as you sometimes get more complicated, right, numbers on these, Right, so if I want to do something like maybe a 0.6 or a point, um, 0.8, right, maybe something like that, you'll notice this is kind of this weird V shape, not exactly a straight line, but uh, this would be, um, and if I took this Y is X to the 1 fifth, or we'll put in, say, 0.2, right, um, that was the original graph I had. And then I'm going to raise that whole thing. All right, so uh, this whole thing, x to the point 0.2, all right, uh, is now going to get raised to the fourth. All right, and that gives me the exact same graph because uh, when you have exponential uh, pieces raised to more exponents, right, I can multiply those exponents. Uh, so that point 0.2 times that 4 becomes a point 0.8. Uh, so that's same as y is x to the point 0.8. Um, and so all those negatives that I have with the point 0.2 now get raised to the fourth power. That's going to make them positive. And I get this whole left side of the graph that uh, is now positive. So uh, there's a lot of um, weird and interesting shapes that you can uh, make with these power functions. Uh, the main thing I'm going to say is uh, you can go ahead and play around with it, kind of adjust the values, see what sort of shapes you can make. Uh, and use that in your um, in your project, and we'll we'll talk about adjusting, like translating, shifting left and right, and um, you can already write stretch or compress, right? So if I know this is sort of my basic shape, I can uh, if I know I'm going to want it stretched up, maybe I can add a number in front and stretch it up or shrink it down, that sort of thing. Um, and again, we'll talk about shifting left and right and some of that in a later video. Um, I'll just show you real quick a couple that I used when I was doing my um, Calvin and Hobbes. Um, I'll go and highlight these are some different types of equations, right? Uh, that were used. There's a couple of power functions here. Um, and I'll highlight. So let me go and hide a couple of these. Uh, so these power functions are going to be uh, basically right here, right? This part of the the shirt and the sleeve of the shirt over on this side. Uh, so those were two power functions. Uh, you'll notice um, there's some restrictions on them, right? We'll talk about that later. And also um, some things in the parentheses with the X, right? So uh, these are generally what we call uh, shifted power functions now. So they were power functions uh, that went through that 0, 0, and um, Kind of one one, but then they got translated, shifted, and uh, all kinds of stuff. So, um, so those shifts, translations, all of that uh, lead me to this part right here. But they started out right before all the, um, the translations and the uh, shifts, stretches, all that kind of stuff. Uh, they did start out as power functions, just this x to the 0.65 and the x to the 0.54. Um, and that's the basic building blocks, right, of, of that part of the shirt over there and that part of the sleeve over there. Um, so this will be useful when you're, you know, say if I were thinking about uh, the Hobbes character over there and I were looking through, might be like, hmm, uh, well, maybe this part of the eye over here might be a, a power function I could use or uh, maybe this part could be a power function. So uh, you'll just want to look through, you know, your figure, see, uh, where, might I, where might I use a line, maybe a parabola, maybe a power function. Uh, there may be several places where you know, maybe you could use um, a power function or a log function or a quadratic, just depending on what section of the graph you're going to use. Uh, so sometimes you have multiple options and sometimes one works better than the other. But uh, that's the sort of thing that you'll be thinking about as we uh, continue on with this graph project. All right.
Uh, that'll do it for now. Uh, you can always let me know if you have more questions.